G'day from a very gloomy Shanghai International Circuit and wasn't that quali one of the craziest you've seen in a long time? No doubt the paint they used on the track had a bit to do with it and if you're just tuning in, um, apparently this circuit has painted the track and uh, there was some doubt as to what it would do if it rained. <laughs> we now know it turned it into an ice skating rink. Lando Norris's lap time was actually cancelled and then reinstated, so he was pretty fortunate to end up on pole. Before I get to Lando though, uh, I was actually out the back of the FIA garage catching drivers coming out as they exited their session. Daniel Ricciardo, he was out after finishing 14th, still had did a lot better than his teammate who ended up 19th. He then queued up to be interviewed and while he was waiting to be interviewed, he could actually see the go on on the big screen and drivers were going off left right and center and as you can see here he uh, was pretty interested in what was happening out there so when Lando came out he had to queue up to be interviewed Carlos Sainz was waiting for his turn the two had a quick chat then Lewis Hamilton joined in and when he saw that there was a queue of drivers in front of him waiting to be interviewed he said nope and headed off I gather he came back a little bit later how about the two grass fires didn't hear about them? well there was one uh, during FP1 in the morning and then there was one between Q1 and Q2. That caused a delay, and I believe uh, it's something to do with the paint they used on that area, because they paint the grass. So getting back to Lando Norris, after his interview, he then headed back to the garage, but was stopped on the way by Craig Slater to do an interview on Sky Sports. And then his social media crew actually gave him a microphone, and he chatted about his um, qualifying as he walked back. And waiting at the back of the garage was his team principal, Andrea Stella. Now they spoke for probably a good couple of minutes there. Lando saying there was a lot of debris on the track. Then they talked a bit more about the quali and then the pair parted company. In a second I'm going to tell you about all the happenings of yesterday, but uh, a couple of things today. Josh Cruz is uh, the Ferrari, well, one of Ferrari's social media content creators. He's a fellow Australian and uh, he told me he got held up in Dubai Airport and his trip ended up being 38 hours with without any sleep. Now I know a lot of people, Michael Ormento, who is the Bell Helmets man, he too told me he was held up there for well over a day and a half. He had to go and buy some clothes like Josh did. And Josh, I can tell you, is a 32 inch waist and he's wearing 38 inch pants because that's all he could get at a pinch last night. Today we had the British ambassador to China with us, Caroline Wilson. She was actually doing a piece to camera and reading from cue cards and it was impressive because they were in Mandarin. So obviously she can read and speak Mandarin. Let me give you a quick rundown as to this paddock. It's the biggest that we have in Formula One. It's too big actually. And uh, I've often said it, it's a little soulless because you can't fill it up. However, if we go back here 50 meters, we're into this lovely tranquil area full of trees, a beautiful series of lakes, and the hospitality suites are actually sitting above those waterways. Now this is a beautiful place to photograph drivers and thankfully, the general public, the fans, aren't allowed back here, so it's reasonably quiet. You get drivers walking through these parks amongst the greenery, and it really makes for some lovely photos. Now, let me show you the media center, because it is unique in so much as it is on the ninth floor of one of these magnificent towers. And the view out here is quite special. And can we shoot from up here? Yeah, there's one spot out the back where we get a shot looking across the track towards pit lane. This is one of the biggest media centres we have. Now let me run through a few things. Uh, yesterday being media day, blue skies. I've never seen skies this blue. These are Australian skies. And it was about 24 degrees, so a real joy. Today, a little bit more overcast, which for me is the norm here in Shanghai. Now you might have noticed that there is one grandstand, which I can see here from where I'm sitting, which is covered with huge signage for the event, and that's because the grandstand's not ready. There's also another one uh, at the, what, one, two, at the third last turn, a big sweeping right-hander that is, again, covered in signage for Giarding, which is the area that we're located in. Zhou Guan Yu was the big story. He's uh, front and center on all of the publicity for this event. He has a movie coming out tonight, premiering in Shanghai, and it's about his journey into Formula One. He did some PR for that the other night in town. His teammate Valtteri Bottas, a couple of things. Well, for a start, let's have an update on Valtteri's mullet. Here it is. It's grown uh, a few millimeters since the last race. Now, he and Joe were out the back of the garage yesterday, and they were doing some social media stuff that involved blowing kisses and posing with phones. Uh, maybe you've already seen that on social media. Maybe it's yet to come up, but uh, when it does, here are the behind the scenes shots. Lance Stroll, he's uh, worn the same coloured outfit in for the last two races in Japan. 
He came in in this tan outfit, and yesterday he was in this tan outfit. I mentioned in Japan he looked very much like John Travolta, I thought. Let's talk Pierre Gasly and his new red shirt. In fact, both drivers are wearing red. It's uh, very Chinese, obviously. And on the back, you can see this large dragon. I did see him walking from the hospitality suite to the garage yesterday and had a quick chat. And he said, no, I'm not driving for Ferrari. And Nika Hulkenberg has his father here. Great man, Dieter. Not mum. Mum's back in uh, Germany. But Dieter is with him this race, as is his manager, Raoul Spanger. Uh, and disregard his indignant middle finger. It's all in jest. Basketball. Why have we got a court in the middle of the paddock? Look, I'm not 100% sure, but there's obviously some sort of collaboration going on because most of the drivers yesterday were shooting hoops. Here's Pierre Gasly. Uh, Fernando Alonso was pretty happy. There was some competition, I think, with the local Chinese basketballers, but uh, it was all in good fun. And yeah, Fernando was pretty darn happy about his effort. Do you know the song, There Are Nine Million Bicycles in Beijing? I do, I love that song. And I was reminded of it yesterday when Charles Leclerc popped up in the paddock late in the day riding this bike around and some of you picked up on the fact that it was a Bianchi bike and I thought it was actually a tribute to Jules Bianchi but some research tells me it's a bike from Shimano, is that right? $1930, I don't know what currency that is. And some of you also commented that he had his pants tucked into his socks which I always used to do on one side so that my pants didn't get wrecked by the chain. At this point I'll tell you that my impressions of uh, Shanghai have risen a little bit after five years of not being here, but the worst thing is, without a doubt, not being able to access Google, Instagram, TikTok, um, Facebook, unless you get a VPN. It's a real pain in the bum, and then the technology to pay for anything, you have to use Alipay in most instances, is a bloody nightmare. There's uh, all sorts of setting up problems. I reckon I've invested, wasted, two and a half hours on all this rubbish. But I think I've sorted that out now. Late in the day, probably my last series of photographs was Lewis Hamilton leaving the track. And here he is in the company of his manager, Mark Hines' son, who was also Lewis's godson. And the reason I know that is thanks to some switched on people in the comments section of this Instagram post. So thank you for your feedback, it's always valued. And finally, let me tell you about me leaving the track last night. It was quite a funny affair. Bit awkward, I've actually, um, got myself a little bit lost. My driver is picking me up from uh, the media car park, but I just can't find the media car park. He Where was the, the place that looks like you, he dropped you? I don't know. It, it's there or there or there. <laughs> They're finding this quite amusing. <laughs> Luckily, I've got this young lady who speaks uh, both languages. <laughs> These people really like being on the camera, don't they? Uh, oh, here, here, here. Oh, here, here. Which one? That's, this one, this one. That's not him. No, he's got a big black car. Oh, he could be here a long time. What do you think? Well, it's tough because you don't know the language, right? Follow me, follow okay, me. Okay, follow. Right yes. now I've got two helpers. Bye. Okay. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you. See, see. Also want to take some photos. Do you follow me on Instagram? No. Can sure. you tell me yeah. your... Instagram? K Y M. K. Oh, can I take a photo with you? Come on. Take one yeah. of you now. Do people know Formula One in this country? Uh, not really that too much. No? Yeah. But you're a fan of Lewis? Yeah, because I study in Canada, in yeah. Toronto. Yeah, there are a lot of um, Lewis fans <coughs> there. Yeah. They wouldn't let my driver into the media car park, so now I have to go across the road to this service station and catch up with him. Help, help. Oh. Well, I did actually find my driver in the end and made it back to the Sheraton Hotel, which I can tell you is an oasis in this area. Now, I have to go and do some more editing, and no doubt you have things to do. So before you go, please hit the subscribe button for those who are unsubscribed. Oh, and like the video too, please. And there's a whole lot of extra content here. Thanks for watching, and stay passionate.